Hello, dear friends. This is Kardec Radio at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with one more immortal messages. Messages that are immortalized and come to us after 66 years. Chico Xavier, in a mediumistic meeting, sanctified mediumship and brought to us through his voice messages of illuminated minds. And today, a message that comes from Therese of Spain, Teresa d'Avila, Therese of Avila, yes, the saint, canonized, yes, Saint Teresa of Avila. You want to know more, right? Of course you do. For people who are coming to this program at the first time, this is a book that is psychographed, that is psychophonically received. It was recorded in a tape recorded of the time, 1954. And Arnaldo Rocha, the spirit director, and also the, the friend of Chico Xavier, the spirit counselor, he comes to transcribe this message and give us an introduction to it. So welcome to Kardec Radio at this moment. This is Teresa of Avila. It's important for us to know more about her. I'm going to share with you just a tiny bit about her. She was born on March 28, 1515 and discarnated on October 15th, 1582. She was a Spanish noblewoman who felt called to the monastic life in the Catholic Church. She was a Carmelite nun, prominent Spanish mystic, religious reformer, author, theologian of the contemplative life and mental prayer. She earned the rare distinction of being declared a doctor of the church over four centuries after her death. Active during Catholic Reformation, she reformed the Carmelite orders of both women and men. The movement she initiated was later joined by the younger Spanish Carmelite friar and mystic John of the Cross. It led eventually to the establishment of the discalced Carmelites. A formal papal decree adopting the split was issued in 1580. Teresa, who had been a social celebrity in her home province, was dodged by early family losses and ill health. In her mature years, she became the central figure of a movement of spiritual and monastic renewal born out of an inner conviction and honed by ascetic practice. She was canonized by Pope Gregory XV in 1622, 40 years after her death. At the time, she was considered a candidate for national patron saint of Spain. And uh, she has since become one of the patron saints of Spain. She wrote her autobiography, The Life of Teresa of Jesus, and seminal works for the church and for all of us. And she comes on the night of October 14th. How interesting, huh? October 14th, 1954, in the city of Pedro Leopoldo, Brazil. And through Chico Xavier, she's going to speak to them, to you, and to me. This is the beauty of mediumship. Great jubilation marked the night of October 14th, 1954, for us. In the final phase of our tasks, the spirit Jose Javier, through Chico Xavier, warned us fraternally. This is Jose Javier, who is discarnated, through Chico Xavier, preparing the group to receive the message by Teresa of Avila. Let us strive to interweave thoughts and prayers for a few minutes. For tonight, we will receive the word, though distant, of who has been to many of us an angel and, an, and a benefactor. 
our group in its spiritual aspect, must remain attentive. In this instant, the great Teresa of Avila will approach us as far as possible. And just as a grain of sand can, in certain situations, reflect the light of a star, our aggregation will receive the message of affection and encouragement through teledynamic fluids. Chico Xavier's mind is prepared now, as if it were a radio receiver. It will automatically repeat with a certain brain zone submerged in absolute amnesia, the words of light of the great spirit, whose name I dare not to repeat. We beg the friends to remain in prayer and silence for another two to three minutes. Having prepared the group, we were fortunate to hear our self-denying spiritual benefactor whose spoken message struck hearts as a sublime projection of light and love. Before we read the message by Teresa of Avila, we want to talk to you about this preparation, which is very, very important. As you can see, Jose Javier is telling us about the mechanisms of this transmission of the message, teledynamics. So it says if it's broadcasted. She was not necessarily there, but she was transmitting the message from another sphere. Just like you and I are doing now. Is it interesting? Huh? Now we can understand because we are using internet all the time. We can't see the Wi-Fi's, the networks, but we are connected. That's how they receive the message. But to receive it, we need the strong bandwidth. Mm. So Jose Javier was strengthening the connection, the bandwidth of the group. Aha, uh -huh. each mediumistic group has a capacity for their bandwidth. And it depends on several aspects, including how homogeneous we are in terms of thoughts and prayers. As he says here, they needed to put together, be more unified in prayer and in silence, but that inner silence, visualizing beautiful things to increase the potency of the connection. Got it? You see how we communicate to higher spirits? It depends on our spiritual bandwidth, okay? So let us boost it in us by raising our vibrations daily through good actions, good works, good thoughts, good feelings, and also prayers. And then we're going to make ever more sublime connections automatically. Now let us feel the presence of this spirit that since the 1500s is so illuminated, so ahead of our time, let us feel her presence and open our hearts to see what we need to understand from this immortal message. Teresa of Avila says, no matter how far in advance the soul is in time, there is always time for the soul to reconsider the road traveled, supplying itself with hope in the love of those whom it loves, just as the traveler at sea supplies himself with fresh water in order to move ahead. There is time to sow and there is time to reap, tells us the experience of the scripture. And if we share the promise together, it would not be fair to forget one another on the day of fulfillment. Let the wheat and the tares grow together until the harvest comes. The Lord in turn recommended. However, the world of his wisdom does not incline us to indifference. Remembering it, we do not think of being the wheat 
because today we see ourselves out of the dark sediment of the flesh. And we do not even suggest you are the chaff because you remain inside it. We simply remember that we're still carrying in the field of our souls the chaff, the tears of illusion, and the wheat of the truth, in need of the mercy of the celestial cultivator. Brothers and sisters, it is not only because your spirit gives itself in trust that the doors of glorified life will be revealed to you, but because your knowledge and virtue will be purified through your hard work and your well-exercised charity. Once we sought peace in the quiet of the cloister, in the assumption that victory could shine to the distance of the war against our own faults, and disputed the possession of the holy tomb of the Excellency King at the price of blood and tears of the like, as if we should not have our own heart for a footstool at the divine's feet. Today, we have sufficient light for the path and it would not be lawful to exchange the bread of wisdom for the goal of madness as the centuries of shadow and impenitence seep into the dust of the world, prepare in the same dust, built in a tabernacle of flesh, the future ages, the future era, in which we will gather again to the exaltation of external truth, of eternal truth. Exalt, your sacrifice, learning to renounce, renounce possessions, losing to win and dying to live. For some time, we will still suffer the captivity of our guilt and transgressions, but soon, accepting the rugged and blessed path of the cross, cross we will exalt before our divine majesty, our liberation forever. May the Lord be praised. Therese of Avila. Therese of Avila. Teresa d'Avila. What did she say? So many things. Let us go back and see. She says that no matter how much we have advanced and advanced we are for our time, we still need to reconsider the road we have traveled. Many of us, especially spiritists, we think, I already know, I know more than people there. Wrong. Because we have a past yet to be redeemed. Don't feel guilty. Don't she talks about guilt. For some time, we're going to feel it. So it's important, she says, to reconsider the road we have traveled. And adjust ourselves in love. And she says, there's time to sow, there's time to reap. And she talks about... The times that we're living right now, 66 years ago, she talks about Jesus' promise that wheat and chaff are going to grow together and then they're going to be separated. That's exactly what's happening right now. The good and the evil, they're so strong on earth. They have never been this strong, though good is more powerful than ever on earth. There's still a lot of ignorance, a lot of inexperience, which we call evil. But the good is at its ascension. And this is declining. Yes, we're declining in evil and ascending in the good. And she says, the word of Jesus' wisdom does not incline us to indifference, 
saying, yes, the harvest will come. One day, wheat and chaff are going to be separated. So we wait. She says, no, we need to observe that inside of us, there is this wheat of the good. And the chaff of evil still remains inside of us. How many people feel that other people are the wheat or they are the wheat, the good part, the chaff, the rest of the people? She's saying that's a misconception. It's inside of us both. But she's saying we simply remember that we all still carry in the field of our souls the tears of illusion. Yes. What are the tears, the chaff of illusion that we carry inside of us? That if we become popular, we're so good. That if we are healthy, unbeatable, we're wonderful. That if we are wealthy, that if we have that job, that if we have that family, illusions, 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 illusions. These are illusions. Those dreams of material order, illusions. And the wheat of the truth. We know it. We have it inside of us. But we need the celestial cultivator. So today we're calling the celestial cultivator, Jesus, to help us get rid of this shaft of illusions and allow us to make this wheat of the truth stronger, more abundant in us. She is reminding us that it's worthwhile establishing this relationship with our master, the divine cultivator, the celestial cultivator, the celestial farmer of our hearts, asking him to help us cleanse this chat, the shaft of illusions, saying, please, Jesus, make me read myself of this vanity, but I want to do it with love. I want to love more. I want to appreciate more. I want to get rid of these illusions of power, of these illusions of uh, beauty, of the illusions of selfishness, of illusions of so many things. Authority. Illusions of race. Illusions of supremacy of any material world. Because supreme is God and only God. We have sufficient light today for the path. And we couldn't exchange the bread of wisdom for the goal of madness. The bread of wisdom is cultivating this truth. Madness would be to go back to that illusion. And I know many people who do this. They're walking the line, they're behaving, but you know they want excitement, adrenaline, they want to go viral. They, and that's madness. It's this lack of balance. In the Gospel According to Spiritism by Alan Kardec, chapter 5. It's item 13th. It talks about calm and resignation as antidotes to madness and suicide. Temperance. We need temperance. Our society needs temperance. We need this mildness, moderation. Because we only cultivate illusions when we become abusive with the divine powers given by God. But for every action, there is a reaction. We need to practice this and tell our, teach our children. For every action, there is a reaction. 
Think before you do things. You're going to pick up a glass of water, think. I'm going to pick up this without spilling the water. I'm going to say something. I'm not saying this to you because I master it, because I don't. But we are practicing here together in this virtual school of Cardiac Radio. We are here together revisiting points for us to work upon. Let us revisit our needs of adjustment and our actions and the consequences of them all. It's like a chess game. I move and I see the consequences. So before I move, I think of everything that is going to happen next. This is social, emotional, spiritual wisdom, intelligence. We need to boost that in us. Using discernment, which is prefrontal cortex work. When we are only in the need of adrenaline, etc., we're only using mid-brain down. When we need that, oh, excitement of the time, that's not a cortical action. It's subhuman. It's not human. Even in neuroscience, we call it subhuman actions because these are actions that happen also in nature. So that's why she says we need to sacrifice what? These illusions, these egos, renounce possessions, power, lose to win. Oh, people think you're great because you are okay. And if you're not, you're great too. You are. Lose to win. Chico Xavier. He lost so many times. Many people thought they were greater than Chico Xavier. Today we look back and we only see Chico. Chico, 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 Chico. Who were the people who thought they were greater than him? We have no idea. We know that Chico is there. And though he discarnated, he's ever more present in our world. The more time goes by, the more present he is not mentioning Jesus. Many people put him down. He lost. Lost in the parameters of the world at the time. And yet, he's winning our hearts every day. That's why today we're going to do this exercise. In the next 24 hours, we are going to call our divine farmer, right, Virginia? Jesus, mm -hmm. you want to call him? Yes? How? Yeah, we're going to do this exercise. It's like Jesus is a farmer and our yes. hearts are the field. And he's going to help us cleanse the heart. Because sometimes in our hearts we have clean illusions. Clean the field. Yes, clean the field. And he's going to put seeds of truth. Okay, so we're going to say, Dear Jesus, please sow seeds of love in my heart. But get rid of the weeds, please. Shall we? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so let's say, please, Jesus, please, sow so seeds, seeds of love, love in, my in my heart. But, but please, please get rid of the weed. Weed. Yeah, the weeds, right? Weed. I said weeds. Yes, thank weed. you. So, more love, less weeds. Oh, well, weeds are pretty. I know. The it's... ones in the field of, but not in our hearts. The weeds in our hearts. Envy, jealousy, they are weeds. Blah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's call the divine farmer. Jesus is our divine farmer, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to thank Teresa of Avila. For helping us, you know, figuring this out, calling the farmer. In the next 24 hours, this is the exercise. And we hope to see you back tomorrow in more immortal messages. 
here at Kardec Radio always nourishing us up. Thank you, friends. And no weeds. No weeds. <laughs> Thank you, Virginia. Bye-bye.